So today we're going to do something that's uh, long overdue. I know it's been months ago that I said that I would run through the suspension upgrades that I've made on our motorhome. We have a 2008 Winnebago Sightseer 34M uh, model, which is about 35 feet on the F53 chassis. And anyone who has one of those knows that the old models that have been unimproved or even some of the new models, they've, they've been making some suspension improvements on the newer models. But I got to tell you, we drove a 2018 uh, motor home with the F53 chassis and it wasn't much better. It's a little better, but not much. Uh, you know, so the F53 chassis, they're known for a lot of tail wag, a lot of uh, blowing around uh, when a rig, big rig passage or even a big vehicle of some sort. I went through this thing and upgraded everything that I could upgrade in it that, that made sense to upgrade. The very first upgrade I made was Sumo Springs. So they're basically an airless airbag. Uh, a really a dense material that provides a lot of uh, cushion and sway control to the rig. Uh, so we'll take a look at those real quick. Here are the sumo springs. This is the back uh, sumo spring, the rear on the dualies. And uh, the only thing I needed to do with these is I had to drill one bolt. Uh, was the upper or lower? I don't remember which one of those bolts I had to drill. But anyway, just had to drill one bolt. And uh, they, they bolt to the spring pack. So what these do, these just really provide a lot of um, sway control, especially when you're going in and out of driveways and curbs and stuff. This really cuts down on the sway. One side will compress, the other side will pull. Uh, so they work in unison to, to kind of control that, that sway as you go over big bumps or a lot of, uh, lot of passing vehicles. That uh, really helps quite a bit. So that's the back, and we'll go over to the front and take a look at those. Right here are the front sumo springs. You can see there's a base and then there's a top. Um, these are two pieces and uh, so they, they work not as much as a push and pull but more of just a dampening effect as you roll over um, you know, big bumps and the front end wants to porpoise and bounce up and down so it helps to control that. Uh, work, work really well. Basically the same uh, type of installation except I didn't have to drill any holes. They just clamped onto the spring pack here and then uh, clamped onto the frame, bolted onto the frame up there. You have to take the factory bump stops out, but other than that, it's pretty simple. And while we're here, we'll take a look at these uh, these new Coney FSD shocks that I installed. By the way, I did all this work myself. I think I already mentioned that, but if it hadn't been for air tools and uh, my air compressor, this would have been uh, nearly impossible. And uh, <laughs> It almost killed me to begin with. I mean, this was a lot of work. Uh, some of these bolts, especially on the uh, the big bolts here, on the shock, had a lot of torque. A lot of torque on them. Uh, okay, so moving from there, we'll take a look at another thing that I bought. I was going to install it myself, but ended up having a shop do it for me. And that's the, uh, the Safety Plus. Right there. So the reason I had the shop installed is because it needed to, to be centered and needed some adjustments that I just uh, wasn't comfortable making. Plus, uh, you know, the front end had to be realigned anyway. So I had that all done in the shop. Cost me, I don't know, 100 bucks or so to do that. Uh, pretty cost effective. On the front also, factory, is this sway brace. Right here you can see that. That was factory. And what was also factory on the front was a sway bar, and I'll go around the front and I'll show you what I installed there. I removed the factory um, sway brace and put in a much larger uh, Roadmaster sway brace. Okay, here we are at the front. Uh, this is the, uh, the Roadmaster sway brace that I put in. This is an inch and five eighths or an inch and three quarters, if I'm not mistaken. The other one was much smaller. And... Um, uh, this is a, a chrome molly steel versus the other uh, type. I don't remember the name of the steel, but this is much stronger. And in addition, you can see here all these bushings. I had uh, I took all the rubber bushings out, even up here on these control arms. Took all the rubber bushings out and had uh, I bought a polyurethane kit and put all poly bushings in, which uh, are much better, last much longer, and they just control a lot better. Uh, this is a, a huge sway 
sway brace. You really can't uh, appreciate the size of this thing. Um, you know, here's a an idea of finger size. I mean, it's it's uh, pretty large in circumference, super strong. So this again helps uh, control a lot of the sway. Uh, as the as the coach sways, the one side will pull down, and the other side, the opposite side, at the same time will will pull up push down and pull up so it really counteracts a lot of that body roll and lean that you get uh, with these coaches they're just so top heavy so that's part of the problem and here you get a, a good idea of the other side of the sumo spring that's installed gives you a good idea how that uh, sets there basically again just bolted to the frame and bolted to the spring back with uh, four bolts pretty simple install all right, we're going to make our way around to the back and show you some of the uh, improvements that I made on the rear suspension. All right, here we are at the rear suspension. One of the first things you can see is this auxiliary sway brace uh, by Roadmaster. Again, a big fan of Roadmaster. They seem to be uh, uh, pretty readily, readily available. The warranties are great, and the support from the company is also great. So this is a big boy, too. Uh, this is the same size as the one in the front. Diameter-wise, uh, again, chrome molly steel, which provides much more um, control of body roll. And then again, you can see the Tony FSD shocks that I installed. And uh, the big red bar in the back is kind of cool. That's called a track bar. And it's very similar to the bar you saw in front, kind of that curved bar that I showed you. Uh, except this is an aftermarket piece. And... Uh, it bolts to the front of the differential and then I'll go around the other side and let you see how that works and then it clamps to the clamps and bolts to the frame right there you can see that and what that does again that also controls a lot of the sway a lot of the tail wagging that uh, these coaches are so famous for it's a good a good shot of that uh, clamp and how it clamps to the chassis and this is the dry, uh, passenger side here. You can do it on either side. I chose to do it on the passenger side. And then there's a turnbuckle. And once you get everything installed, you just adjust these turnbuckles up here to, to make it nice and tight. And uh, I think mine might need a little bit of adjustment, additional adjustment. I've got a little bit of a wag I still want to take out, but that's just a process of, of figuring that out. Anyway, that's been a big improvement and uh, something definitely uh, worthwhile. But here's another shot of the ultra track track bar. You see how that's bolted onto the differential. It's pretty simple. Just pulled three bolts out, uh, reinstalled uh, the bolts that came with the kit because they needed to be a little bit longer. Uh, Loctited those in, and then uh, you can see how that clamps onto the passenger side chassis. And again, that uh, that's adjustable, and uh, that'll be part of the adjustments that I make uh, to kind of dial in this rear differential because this thing can really move back and forth uh, as much as three or four inches each way and that's where you get your tail wag whenever a semi comes up behind you you really feel that uh, semi blow you around well that's your differential partially your differential moving uh, you know three or four inches either way that translates to a lot of uh, a wag and uh, motion up into the cab so uh, another good uh, again, like I said, another good uh, investment that I made there. And going down to the to the factory uh, front stabilizer bar. And again, this was already a decent size, uh, you know, so I didn't bother changing that out. But I did change out all of the bushings. Again, just like the front, I went to the, um, the poly bushings all the way around, just uh, for longevity. And uh, there's the other control bar, just for longevity, and they're just better. I mean, they last longer. They don't uh, make any noise, and I uh, don't have to worry about you know dry rot and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, we should have a pretty good rig for for years to come. Pretty happy with it. Well, that was just a really quick tour of uh, all the upgrades I made to the suspension system. And it took me <laughs> obviously much longer. Uh, to do the work that it did for me to show you what I did. Again, if I didn't have, um, you know, air tools and, and, and things like that, this would have been an impossible job. Did it all in my driveway and uh, took me 
all said and done, probably over the course of uh, two months to do everything. I didn't do it all in one fail swoop. Two or three months is what it took me. And uh, but but love the result. <clears throat> and uh, you know, drivability has improved dramatically. I, I basically steer now with um, with. I still use two hands, but I just basically use. Um, my first and second finger and my thumb on each side of the steering wheel with my arms resting on the uh, armrests and just go down the road nice and gentle uh, no pulling the safety plush really does a lot of um, correction in terms of keeping it in your lane because some of these roads are, are pretty rutted so it does a lot of motorhomes do what they call rut tracking and your motorhome will seek those ruts and it will kind of just kind of float in and out of those ruts like this this doesn't do that at all uh, the biggest thing with this Safety Plus also is if you have a, a tire that blows, this will correct, straighten your tires and wheels, and uh, the idea is it's going to keep you on the road uh, safe instead of veering off one way or another in a dramatic fashion. I know there's a video out on YouTube that shows that. The guy blows his tire, the whole rig goes off into the median, <clears throat> rolls it, and uh, he was injured pretty badly, I, I understand. So, anyway. The whole idea with all these upgrades is to make it more pleasurable to drive so that, one, I can drive without being fatigued. That's the biggest thing. Uh, I fly small airplanes, and one of the biggest things we always want to make sure as a pilot that we don't get fatigued. And the same thing with, with driving a rig this size. As many of you know, it takes a lot of effort sometimes. So the idea was to reduce that, eliminate as much uh, driver fatigue as possible, which it has incredibly. Uh, so I'm happy about that. And then also for Shauna to drive when she needs to. So she has the confidence of being able to go down the road uh, in a straight line and, and be, and be uh, confident that she can manage uh, the big rig with, uh, with the Jeep being towed behind it. I'll put a link to everything that I installed in the description. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this. Again, share, subscribe. Any comments, any questions on how you might uh, install these on your rig, leave your comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So long.